Okay, so welcome to something that I've wanted to do for a while, uh, for the 25th anniversary of the series, which I know was last year, but I wanted to kind of pay homage to the original, the OG, say the name of the game, quickly. Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Um, I played the remake a couple years ago but we're going to go back in and do the original. And once again, you have the choice between Chris and Jill. Come on, who do you think I am? I'm picking Jill. If you pick Chris in the original, you are a fool. You are a dupe. If you pick Chris, you don't get... What is this? I hope this isn't Chris's blood. You don't get Jill Sandwich. You don't get... I have this. So I'm going to let these cutscenes play out. Uh, every single cutscene in this game is iconic, Alpha so enjoy. Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone, situated in northwest Raccoon City, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots, Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle Chris, of our mission. You found it? No, I haven't found it yet. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about ten people. Victims were apparently eaten. Bravo team went to the hideout of the group and disappeared. Look, Chris! It was Bravo team's helicopter. Nobody was in it. But strangely, most of the equipment was still there. However, we soon discovered why. Chris Redfield. Jill Valentine. Barry Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Albert Wesker. Resident Evil. What is this? Wow, what a mansion! Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it! Don't open that door! But Chris is... What is it? Maybe it's Chris. Now, Jill, can you go? I'm going with you. Chris is our old partner, you know. Okay, let me handle this. St 
Stay alert! So here we are, kind of getting the game started properly room. now. This is, like I said, the original. This is the non-DualShock version. This is the original, what? original game. What is this? What is it? Blood. Jill, see if you can find any other clues. I'll be examining this. Hope this is not Chris's blood. So good, God. Every single line Barry has is iconic. So this is the original, original game, not the DualShock version, which is kind of annoying. Because that means that you have to use the D-pad to walk around, and that, you know, it gets a little... takes a little getting used to, I'll say that. And this is being recorded on actual hardware. Never, ever, ever waste any ammo on this guy. He's the first zombie you run into, and he, again, is very iconic. Run back to Barry. Don't waste any bullets on that guy, ever. Barry? What is it? Watch out! It's a monster! Let me take care of this. What is it? Oh, what is it? Was killed too. Maybe by this creature. Anyway, let's report this to Wesker. Yeah, Barry's voice actor is no offense to the guy. He's genuinely very bad, but it's one of the most endearing performances. Like, I can't tell you how many lines he has in this game that are seared into my brain. Wesker! Help me look for him, Jill. And don't leave this hall for the time being. So a lot of this is beat for beat, like exactly what you remember from the remake. Uh, the remake is the game that I've played the most often. So, you know, go up the stairs, go back down, and then you just talk to Barry. Uh, there is no quick turn in this game, which is very annoying. That wasn't invented yet, unfortunately. Uh, so, since this is on official hardware, you know, there's a buzzing in the background that I can't do anything about. Find anything, Jill? Nothing. What is this all about? I can't figure it out at all. Beats me, too. Now it's Wesker's time to disappear. I don't know what's going on. Well, it can't be helped. Let's search for him separately. I'll check the dining room again. Okay. I'll try the door on the opposite side. This mansion is gigantic. We could get into trouble if we get lost. We should start from the first floor, okay? And... Jill, here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. Thanks. Maybe I'll need it. Jill's voice actress isn't much better, but I do like her voice. I think she's got a good voice. Listen, if something happens, let's meet up in this hall. This time, I'll be there. Her line deliveries are much better than Barry's, but still, like I said, not much better. She sounds like she's reading from a script for the very first time. Thanks. I may need this. So, yeah, that's some pretty weird stuff. So, right now, just real quick, this part that we're doing is kind of timed. You know, if I'm playing this original game, there's one scene in particular I need to make sure happens. And if you go a certain way, go out of your way, take a little too long, the scene actually will not activate. So, before we go try and do that, we're gonna very quickly come over to Kenneth, grab, uh, I think he, I believe he has two clips on him, 
two handgun clips. Yeah, he has two. And then we'll make our way to where we actually need to go. There are two scenes in this game that are kind of timing based to get to happen. And uh, we're going to try and go for both of them. I've Sometimes I've gotten the one not to activate. So that one the timing is a little bit more tight on. This one I feel like I've never not gotten. Unless you just skip this room altogether and go back later. So yeah, there's not really much I could do about the buzzing, but I kind of feel like it gives it like an authenticity to it. You know, it, it, you can't really hear it when there's music and sound effects going on, but when there's like just silent rooms, you know, that's when you can really kind of hear it, but you know, that's maybe like 15% of the game. So just bear with it. Uh, I can't quite figure out if it's like a cable issue or if it's just... It happens no matter which cable I use, composite or component, so it's not... Uh, I believe it's not... It has nothing to do with the cables that I'm using. When I revisit this game, the original Resident Evil, uh, nine and a half times out of ten, it's going to be the remake. But if it's not, I play the DS version of this game, Deadly Silence which adds a whole lot of new kind of mechanics to this game and makes it, at least in my opinion, the definitive version of the original 96 Resident Evil game. So I don't very often come back to the actual PS1 version. Uh, and it does help that you can actually play that version with the analog stick, like on the 3DS, which uh, would be nice. So this guy obviously is playing dead. If you approach him from the right side of the screen, Jill's left. When we turn around, it'll be Jill's left. So right here, go to the Jill's left, the right side of the screen, now the left side of the screen. He won't get you. But if you go on the other side of him, he's going to kind of try and bite your ankles. Which uh, will result in an instant kill for him, because you'll smash his head. But Jill will take a little bit of damage, which uh, I don't really want to do. Because I do find, for me, this game is way more difficult than the original, or than the, the remake. And one of the reasons why is actually right here you're seeing it, because I always get confused in this room. Which of these is, is pushable, because I always mistake it with the, the remake. But I think it's that one right there, you can tell it's a different color from the last. Uh, these dogs suck. But yeah, this is actually different from the original Japanese version because in Japan, uh, video game rentals, I believe, are illegal. I don't know if they still are, but when this game came out, it was illegal to rent a video game. Like, you couldn't have a blockbuster renting video games, which was, in the 90s, a way that like a lot of people, myself included, played like N64 games. And... In America, when they released this game, they realized that that's a big thing, and they wanted to keep getting sales. So they they increased the difficulty on the North American version, specifically, to make it so that people who were renting the game would have to keep renting it. Or just buy the game. Uh, which is, I believe, their actual reasoning behind it. So, for instance, one of the things that I hate about this particular version the most is that there is no auto-aim, and I believe that's not the case in the Japanese version. So, you know, when you aim your gun when there's a zombie near, it's not going to directly aim yourself in that guy's direction. You have to actually manually aim at the enemies, which is fairly annoying in some, you know, life-or-death situations. So, we're going to go ahead and pick up this shotgun. Yes, I will take the shotgun. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead and exit this room, because there's nothing else to get. I gotta say, this game still looks great. I mean, what else is there to say? This The pre-rendered backgrounds look great. I even think the character models look pretty good. So we're gonna calmly walk over to this door here, but it is locked. And there's not really a whole lot we can do in here, so we're just gonna kind of wait around for a few seconds here. Kind of... Have Jill practice her skills. Hey, what's going on? Jill? Is that you, Jill? What happened? 
Harry, help me, please. The door won't open. Quick! Stay away from the door, Jill. I'm gonna kick this door down. Hurry! This way! That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Barry, thanks for saving my life. But Barry, didn't you say you are going back to the dining room to do some research? Why on earth are you here? Uh, I just had something I wanted to check. Now, let's get back to searching for the lost captain and Chris, shall we? Thank you, Barry. Yeah, yeah. Jill's voice actress, like I said, she has a good voice, but I think she's too cheery. She sounds too happy during every single line delivery. Um, obviously the original game... Why do I keep saying that? The remake has, like, some of the best atmosphere and visuals in any horror game ever released. Maybe even the best. But there's something so eerie about this game, like how... In the remake, everything is dark, and it, it seems like everything's dilapidated, and the mansion hasn't been used in, like, a decade. This version looks like it's been lived in, like, recently. All the lights are on, all the rooms are very bright. It's got cheesy wallpaper, uh, weird colors, just a lot of weird decorations in here, and it just makes the game have a completely different vibe that's just as creepy as the remake while having a completely different vibe. So yeah, the knife trick works pretty well in this game because early on you don't really have a whole lot of handgun ammo and sorry, that is my dog making that noise. Um, you know, get him on the ground, I find it takes somewhere between four to six shots to kill a zombie in this game. Five usually being the magic number. Um, but if you get them down, and they you see that there's no pool of blood under them, that means they're still alive. I would give them a poke with the knife before you start shooting them. So here we go, getting ready to hear the greatest save room theme of all time. And it doesn't play in this one for some reason. I'll never quite understand this. Why the save room theme does not play in the very first one you get into. I can understand if it's like you don't know it's a safe room yet. So when you see a, another room that's like this later on, that's when it plays the theme to be like, hey, this room is actually safe. But all the subsequent times you come through here into this room, it should play the theme, which I think is how they do it in the remake, if I'm not mistaken. But that is basically it for this first video into Resident Evil, the original. So I will see you next time where we keep exploring the Spencer Mansion. So, see you then.